Welcome to the Retrospect Podcast, a show where people come together from different walks of life and discuss a topic from their generation's perspective. My name is Ian, and as always, I'm joined by Stoney. Hello. And Jason. Hello, everyone. How was your guys' week? Well, uh, it's really good right now. Um, <laughs> you know, I'm drinking my Kopi Luwak coffee, and right. uh, I've had a good week. I can't say it's been bad. I mean... Uh, it's good to hear. Uh, my... my uh, just... It's been a good week. I really can't, right. can't complain sometimes, at all. Sometimes it's nice to have those kind of weeks where there's nothing to really talk about because it's like everything's just been good. Nothing to really complain about because, you know. And I kind of like it that way. Oh, of course. Actually. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, I yeah. kind of like kind of like keeping on, keeping on. I don't like yeah. too much jumbling around. Still January, so there's still a lot of, you know, new stuff happening. I'm pl- I, I'm trying yeah. my best to um, – I, I really am trying to – be healthier this year. I know everyone says that, but like they're, I'm not going to the gym or anything like that or having like any sort of uh, resolution or anything, but I, I definitely am like just trying to do a better job of watching what I eat and cooking more at the house and stuff like that. So that's kind of, and I'm, I've been keeping that kind of theme going. That's the only thing that's really been, uh, you know, well, different for me. I, you know? I, in, I also in that vein, I went running the other day. Oh, fun. All but right, I had to stop ahead, after Stone. two minutes because okay. I forgot something. Okay. <laughs> I forgot I'm old and can't run. <laughs> stop it. <laughs> I, oh, ran a, I ran a half marathon this past weekend. Uh, yeah, that's oh, right. Yeah. How did that go? Well, well, I did well. Kept it under two hours is what I always try to keep a half marathon. Uh, my legs were hurting. They were hurting even worse the next day. I believe it. Um, especially my calves. My calves are yeah. really tight. And uh, I may think I've maintained about an 835 pace. Fun. Okay. You know. All right. Cool so, stuff, man. You know, it did pretty do good. They, do they uh, give certificates and awards for these things? No, I, I didn't. I think I came in uh, for my age group. Uh, I think I came in like 19 out of 60 guys that were in my age category. Um. Overall, uh, you know, I think I probably placed in the top twenty-five to thirty percent. That's cool. Okay, so you get a ribbon, yeah. a ribbon for a. Oh uh, no, you just get a finisher <laughs> yeah, right. medal. I mean, from what I yeah. mean, for I think I I saw the top person in the half marathon category. I I think he ran that race in like an hour and fifteen minutes. Just some, wow. some it, it just some stupid. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we're talking people running six minute, six, <laughs> six and a half minute miles. I mean, it's yeah. just like. Yeah, you really got to be going. What do they have? A donut at the other end of the uh, race past the finish line? I mean, cause... it's just unbelievable what some of these people could run. I mean, it's just, I mean, I just, I can't imagine that. I just, yeah. I can't imagine running that, that way. But they got plenty of people that just can just yeah, kick on. it in gear and just go. Man. Um, but yeah, it was a great weekend. The temperature was, it was cool. Mm-hmm. But look at that wind wasn't blowing, so yeah, it was actually perfect. So I ran with a long sleeve shirt and in shorts. Oh, fun! Okay. So it 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 Beautiful really worked weather. out well, and that's actually per. I think it was like maybe thirty eight, thirty seven. That's we not bad. Started running, so you know, yeah. As long as the wind's not blowing, yeah. That's, if that wind's blowing, it can get <laughs> that can get cold. The uh, only thing, um, like one more thing, I, I think that I had was I I realized that I had a whole bunch of like rewards with um like this clothing brand that I like a lot, and so mm-hmm. I bought another suit. So that came in today, and and I put it on before you guys got here, and it was like, oh, this is super nice. I I, I really like. I'm just trying to. For me, I realized I have a lot of like casual everyday clothes, kind of what I'm wearing, and I have like full suits, but I have no like in between kind of stuff, um, like a sports coat. Yeah, or... right, or just like semi casual, or I'm uh, sorry, uh, semi formal, like you know, dressy casual kind of stuff. Where it's like maybe it's not like a solid one color suit. Maybe it's just like a little patterned mm-hmm. something different or. Something I can wear, like not wear a tie with kind of thing. And I'm trying to get some more of those sort of stuff just to kind of elevate, Mm -hmm. you know, the kind of uh, in-between stuff. You know, just stuff to go to church in or stuff to go to a nice dinner in. It's not, I I try to stay casual too most of the time. Right. And Uh as we know, I buried my grandmother last week. And um, we're trying to get ready for the the funeral. Um, I went through about half my clothes and had to, I'm just going to have to give them away. Yeah. Um, all of my jackets, except for two of them don't fit anymore. It's like they, they, 
cover over each other by foot oh, on yeah, each yeah. side. And wow, I'm like, yeah. oh, man, I guess I've lost a little weight. Yeah. When um, was the last time you think you wore that? Because, um, I mean, I know you obviously have lost a lot of weight this year, but, like, yeah. has it been even? No, some of them, uh, it's, I'm, I guess in the last six months, I'm down 40 wow. pounds, 45 wow, pounds. Wow, that's great. Yeah, that's great. And, um, you know, some of them you look at it and just don't pay attention to. But yeah. But I wanted to look good for my grandmother's funeral. Oh, of course, funeral. yeah. So, obviously, Miranda's like, well, you need to go try some stuff on. I want to yeah, see right, you. Right. Just, you know, be my model. And <laughs> yeah. You're just going to go up there yeah, and just model right, some right, stuff yeah, for me. And she yeah. would go, no. Yeah. No. Yeah, women like to see their men dressed up. I mean, yeah. Yes, it's, really nice to, it's nice to clean up every now and then. Yeah. Especially because I know, I know Mallory likes to dress up and go, like, out to some nicer restaurants every now and then. Yeah. And I do have some stuff that's nice. But, like I said, I'm just trying to diversify. Sometimes you wear the same blazer every now and then you're like i want to i want something a little new that's just what i that's like i said i had some rewards had some uh i got some discounts and stuff and i was like you know and i think the next thing i want to do is i think i i have like an old like all black suit just like a gotta have a black i know and that's what i'm saying and i and i and i have a couple other ones but i think the one that i do have i got a long time ago and i think it's not i just wear mine for funerals basically right right so anyways that's Mm -hmm. that's about the most exciting thing for me Bought a lot of new toys at work that I mean I'm but that's all expensive stuff that I'm not all equipment and gear mm-hmm. but besides that. So Well, you and I are very lucky and I don't want to make Jason feel bad, but we got some good looking, you know, tasteful women who yes. like to yes. go and do things and look yeah. good and their men look good when they're doing it. So Right. Which is kind of interesting considering the possible subject <laughs> for the podcast. <laughs> right, today. right. Well, I, okay, before we get, before we jump in. Before will, we jump in. Before we jump in, I want, I'm going to go ahead and apologize on the air to both you guys because I didn't know this going into it. I, um, I was researching, what well, we've been talking about having an episode on Chariots of the Gods. Right. Which is like a lot of like ancient history, ancient aliens possibly, like that kind of whole uh, scope of things. So, I hope you guys are looking forward to that. And I did a lot of research on the book and I, cause I thought we were talking about that this week, but I was actually, I was actually wrong. And so I, I accidentally started an almost hour long conversation about aliens and, <laughs> and, and, and the universe as a whole. And it just got into a, a very, um, <laughs> it, it was a great, it was a great conversation. The pre-show it. will it actually like, <laughs> be longer <laughs> yes, than the show. Le- lesson learned. Right. Hit I'm, record. I opened a big can of worms and didn't realize what I was doing. And, well, you uh, know when you're driving so, on the road and your significant other or your friend yes. is driving and you're in the passenger seat and you <laughs> see something coming and you're trying to hit the brakes or trying to steer right, or holding right, on. Right, right, I think we need some extra record buttons no, around no, here. No, no, no. Anyways. But yeah. So somebody else can hit the record right. button. So we, we definitely had a discussion about something mm-hmm. that should have been an episode, I feel like, but I... Eh, we know, could do it again sometime. I'm given enough time and I will I will formulate new opinions and we'll have a great discussion later. But awesome. anyways, this episode though we had we did talk about this for a little bit and you were saying about our lovely significant others that um what are some red flags in a relationship? Or going into a relationship. Into a, or yeah, that just can personal. open a whole can of worms. I mean, yeah. Man, I have to tread carefully right If now. I can start off, if I could just, if I could just tiptoe into this, my brother, he is a paramedic mm-hmm. and he is like, sometimes if I know um, the girl's prescription, those are automatic red flags for oh, me. Oh, wow. He's like, there's a few, there's a few, like a, a few medications he knows by name, obviously because of his line of work, that he's like, if, if her prescription list has like these two medications on it, I'm not having it. <laughs> I won't go into reasons why the, like, what what they what those are, but obviously mm-hmm. he's like those are the two. He's like, she's probably crazy. I'm not doing it. <laughs> yeah, you gotta watch out for. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know. Gotta watch right. out for crazy people now. <laughs> right, right, I mean, exactly. It's, uh, so, and I think you know it could be said in the opposite as well. If there's any if there's any guys out there that have some specific medications on the list, probably like I don't want to. Mm-hmm. I don't need that in my life. Yeah. Okay. Medication. Medication is probably a, for him at least. That's one that he depends like, on the know, medication. Depends on the medication. Like he said, he has two in particular. He's like, if I see, I, he's like, if it's one, it's probably probably not going to happen. He's like, but if it's two, definitely not. Mm-hmm. Not having it. So that's a good point. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So what would be another hmm. another red flag? I'm trying to think one for me personally. What I about think, what about? Uh, I, I thought you were gonna. 
on, I'm, I'm, well, I'm, it, I'm, you know, I'm it would depend on the perspective because I think ladies might have a different what might constitute red flags for them, right? Right. Versus what a guy would consider. I, well, a I, don't, red I flag. think it also just uh, I well, think, guys are dumb. <laughs> we really don't see red flags. I think it all. I think it just. <laughs> or matter of fact, do we even care? Right. That's right, what I'm right, saying. Right. <laughs> <laughs> for me, I. Uh, I feel like it also just depends on the person too. Right. Like it not only just is it like a man, like a man versus woman kind of thing, but I think it's also just like a person well, by person basis. Well, it's like if, if what you're are you hungry, you, right. okay, you know the steak is going to taste one way, but even a cracker is going to taste oh, good yeah. if you're really really <laughs> right, hungry. Right, right. So I'm just saying. So you're saying you know, desperation. Yeah, desperation is going to cause some <laughs> some problems there I, too. I, but I see. that was the good saltine, right? Yeah. Right. So, or if you're, you know, you're eating regularly, it's going to take a steak for it mm. to, to, you know. I, I think it, it varies. I, I think for, for, for ladies, I believe when they're looking uh, for a potential mate, I mean, you know, women are going to be more concerned with security. Right, right. You know, that's going to be a driving force, uh, you know, children and, and stuff like that, you know, that. They're gonna. Can you hold a job? Look at can one. Well, yeah, can yeah. you afford that? Are you are you, can, are you kind of grown up enough to kind of deal with the life issues that surround that? Yeah. Um. You know, guys. You know, we don't worry about security <laughs> so much. I mean, we're not wired for that. I mean, guys are. I'm looking for the most obvious person that you know a female that i can you know in essence you have children it? with okay, i mean yeah, is yeah. that it, that's really what guys okay, are, are so wired. a lack of trust would be a red flag if you couldn't trust somebody loyalty a, yeah know. trust loyalty that would be a big yeah. that's a biggie for me so what about either way what about you know um a controlling behavior would that be a red flag? Someone who tries to control what you do, where you yeah. go, how you do it, yeah, things things like that. That you know, some some type of a controlling behavior to me would be a red flag because I'm not wanting to go into a relationship to be controlled. I'm wanting to go into a relationship where two people come together and look in a direction for something. And then figure out how to get there together. But if one person's controlling the direction of that ship, that's not going to be fun for the other one. And that's male or female, right? Right, right. Yeah, that, that's true. I don't so want to be, I, I don't think anybody likes being controlled unless you're codependent. Well, that's mm. another red flag, you know, right? Wouldn't codependent. codependency then be another red flag? I mean, some people do kind of like, some people are in relationships where they're, they're basically well, and that, yeah, just like led. I said, and that's what I'm saying. I think it, it really just depends on the person. For me personally, I mean, like, yes, I I'm kind of a control freak in a lot of ways. So having someone that's like, no, you're gonna do this, this, and this, I would, I, I think in some aspects of my life would be kind of fun here and there. But every day, I'd be like, mm -mm, I can't really. But you're saying some people may like, I don't want to, I just want to turn my mind off, and I want you just to tell me what to do. So right, people, exactly. And somebody may love out that. There like that. Right. I mean, saying, I I, I know, I know, I know. Over the years, I've known lady friends of mine yeah. that are or married that are very unhappy mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but the security that's provided them they take whatever yeah is is given in the relationship and it's just what it is i mean it's just you know you kind of roll the dice and, and right, you right. know you know if i'd like for it to be this way but the alternative is me being alone mm. and now i'm vulnerable right i see for so, me, like speaking from my own personal experience, I, I've realized like being in the dating scene, if I can't have, it doesn't have to be a super highbrow, intelligent conversation. But if I can have like a smart conversation with you, um, that's, that's kind of a deciding factor. In, in the case of like I would want to be with you like so so for instance with Mallory that was one thing I was I, I realized very quickly like as opposed to previous girls that I had dated like a red flag for me was like if we're if we're having a conversation and I feel like we're not on the same like wavelength as right. far as like intelligence in a way I'm not saying you have to be smarter than me or you even have to be but like I I've had conversations where like I felt like I was I feel like I was having a hard time talking to this person. And I was like, if I can't like have like a regular conversation, like have an intelligent 
conversation. That was one thing for me. I was like, I just, I've realized really quickly. I was like, we're just not going to mesh. Cause I just can't, I, I couldn't handle that. Well, so I mean, a lot of things you have to factor in. If you're going to be with somebody, I would think there are right. a lot of factors that come in, especially for relationships that are geared toward ending marriage. Yeah. Yeah. You know, where do you stand politically, religiously, yeah. you know, all these things matter. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. In a in a relationship, because right. I mean, if you're not on the same page on some of these fundamental issues, oh yeah, you may have the best of time with somebody, right. but at the end of the day, you know where the rubber meets the road. Uh, you know, we just got to get on with life. Yeah. And if we're not jiving there, and see, then it's just not going to happen. And the whole reason why I I said that one for me was because I had a friend of mine that loved being like super intelligent, that loved being like the smartest guy in the room. So the whole reason why I was saying that was for me, like I realized he was attracted, or I don't know if he's attracted or just loved the idea of being the smartest person around, but like him being with a, a girl that was probably, uh, that probably couldn't, uh, speak on the same level as him was right. kind of something he was like, Oh, I kind of like this for me. I was like, I, <laughs> I just really can't have a, like a really good conversation. Is what it felt like for me. But another big one that I was thinking about, what about, um, <laughs> what about like your level of cleanliness? Is that like a red oh, flag? Oh, that would probably be huge for some people. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I for mean, for some, me, there's some people. It's not that big of a deal. For me, like I, I just, I, I may not be the most clean, like germaphobic kind of clean person, but I'm a, a, I like being a tidy person. Right. I like having all my stuff in its place. I, um, like I said, I, I may not, everything may not be perfect, but there's like a place for everything. I like it all to be there, and like I, I like to have like the countertops all cleaned off. Like that's something mm-hmm. that I like. I like having an empty sink. That's like those are all like things that I've I've realized I really like. So could that be somebody's red flag? Against right, you. Exactly, right. So as much as you like things, what if somebody looks at that and goes, man, it's mm-hmm. OCD. Uh, I know, know, yeah, Is right, that right. a red flag? Probably so. To somebody. So, yeah, yeah. I, I could see that, and I've heard of that. And so, where and, people would look at that and go, I can't live with you because right. you're... Well, and, so, and that's what I'm saying. You know, like, like, And so this is where, like, for me, like a red flag would be someone that could never do that. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, like Mallory may not be to the same, like, level of, like, of... But she respects you well, oh, and uh, how you right. are. So, like, the thing is, like, the kitchen may get dirty, and I'm okay with that. But sometimes, like, we'll usually will like allow it, like like the, we allow time to like to make sure the kitchen is clean in a certain mm-hmm. way or the way I, I see. Like it to he be. says that. But have you tried putting the coffee cup in the wrong side of the sink and gotten the <laughs> no. backhand? No, and see, no, <laughs> I am not. I'm not like that. I'm just, I'm not, yeah, no, no. Listeners, I am I just did. picking on Ian. I am. It's not right. really true. He did not backhand right. me. No, no, it was a front hand to the back <laughs> of the head. <laughs> <laughs> no, yes. no, no, no. A lot of times people get really uh, get nervous about that because they think that I'm like really particular about it. I have a cast iron sink, and like glass stuff in it i've realized doesn't play well mm-hmm. so anytime we have like glass cups and stuff i always try to put it beside the sink because i've had numerous times where the the glass cup will slip and go dink and hit it and shatter oh wow so i've lost a handful of cups in that nice cast iron sink we won't go there but anyways but that's the thing so like so for red flags right what about confidence too much confidence or someone with low self-esteem Hmm. How how does a confidence possibly play into a red flag situation? I, I would agree that the extremes of both yes. would probably be red flags. But it just in my experience and just my life and with other people, and I think the person with less confidence is probably worse off than the person with too much confidence. Because hmm. I've seen people be with someone of, a lot of confidence come off as very arrogant, yeah. but they still stay with them. Right. Versus the person that has no confidence is well, really person kind with of no confidence really also. kind of viewed as a you really as kind of a wimp or, or, an or energy just train. you get walked on and I can't yeah. be with you because mm-hmm. I need somebody to stand up. Right. They're just a, they're an energy drain. You're, right. you're always feeding, trying to build them up, and they keep sucking and taking and sucking and taking. And you're just trying to build them up and get them to a level where they can at least appreciate themselves a little bit right. and they won't do that. And so how much energy do you have to put into somebody who has no confidence? Yeah. Yeah. You know, that's a, that's a good one. I, I didn't even think about the confidence issue. That that's a real good point there. Mm-hmm. Cause I think that leads to a lot of other things. Oh, absolutely. Yes. Yes. I totally right. agree because right. to me, and this is one of the things and, and I bring 
you know, my baby into it. Heidi oh, Dr. Right, right. Miranda. <laughs> yeah. One of the things that really attracted me to her was she was very statuesque and she was very confident in herself. She knew what she wanted. She knew who she was and she was happy with that. You know, does that mean we're perfect and we don't want to make some little tweaks and stuff on our lives? No, but she was confident and she knew who she was. And I really liked that. Right. That was one of the things that I went, that's somebody I could deal with, you know, <laughs> deal with. And, and, I well, I mean, I'm, I'm you know, playing when, it, yeah. when you're, when you're, yeah. Well, in the beginning of any relationship, right, these right. are the kind of things that each person they're going through their head. It's like, you know, right, right, right. Can a I, lot of can times, I work with this person right, and develop right. a re- and okay. build a relationship? By no means, my what was I not, was I making fun of the the terminology, but like uh, because that it, it just sounds like something that you would say. A, like like further on into a relationship you know what i mean like mm-hmm. that that's the kind of terminology i would use as well as like how i need to find somebody that's going to put up with me you know what mm-hmm. i mean yeah <laughs> whereas right. like whereas well, we I all would, do yeah, exactly. one of the we things, all do sure yes. one at of the end the of the day we all do in a relationship and i think going into a relationship and having dry spells in a relationship yeah we forget that everybody we meet we don't have to be with forever right okay and we need to understand that this is a trial period. This is a testing period. I, you need to look for the red flags and go, hey, you know what? I like you. You're pretty fun, but I can't do this thing here. And maybe you should go your way and I should go my way. But we don't want to do that. We keep covering over the red flags mm-hmm. and we bury them and go, well, maybe I can change them. Maybe this will happen. Maybe there, this will change. I feel like there, there, um, there's two, there's like two sides to that sword, I feel like. I, I feel like sometimes sometimes people have I think too sensitive of red flags. Okay. And then they and then they shut people well, down. Sure. At, like 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 um So they see problems where there really are problems. Right, right. Or or, mm-hmm. or they think that this is a red flag, but it could just be like a quirk or whatever about this person and right. then they'll like they'll shut this person down altogether. Okay. What happens if Mal- Mallory came in every day right. and threw her sweater or her jacket on the couch? In the same spot right. every day, yeah. or next through something right next to the hamper instead of just putting it into the hamper. Right, right, right. Is that too far, or is it you're going? Oh, let me just pick it up and put it in there. For Usually, her. I'm just the kind of person that will pick it up and put it, and it's no no big so deal. So for you, it's like, okay, but could that be for somebody well, right. else? Right, well, and that's what I'm saying. Is that but, too but far I'm, though? And I'm I, and, I, and I'm not even talking about like like in deep into a relationship. I'm talking about like people that are like just starting off. Like you have like mm-hmm. a first or second date thing, and they're like, "Oh, that's a red flag. I'm not going to be with them anymore." And it's like, oh, "Well, did you really give them like a full chance, or was that just like a one? Like, did they did they really mean that, or is well, that pe- kind of people have been hurt? Well, you're right. You you're know, right. They, they probably carry some baggage with them, and yeah. That's why they may be jumping that, the gun. And you're right. And and that's but, but what I'm saying is like I'm saying there's like those two, are deal breakers. Those are or you're or at deal, deal breakers. breakers. I guess you're right. Is that is like two sides of the spectrum? Like that like the two extremes where it's like is it are you being too sensitive or are you being not sensitive enough and you're like this pe- this person's bad for me and you're overlooking the mm-hmm. red flags or deal breakers or right. whatever you want to call them. You're right though. Deal breakers is a different term, but it. I guess that's what I'm talking about mm-hmm. in that scenario is like that is a, I don't know, but that's just, you're right though. It is, it, 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 has that person been hurt in such a way where they're making this kind of like, you know, immediate decision based on mm-hmm. this interaction or whatever. But I've seen that before where someone's like, you know, makes a, makes a call, a judgment call on a person. Like, I just don't think we're going to work out. And it's like, but did you really get a chance to like know them or was that just kind of a, I don't know. So I've had friends like that. that How just long like, do you think, that trial period should last. Um, I think at least a couple of dates. I feel like sometimes I think you could have a good imp- a good first impression, and then you have a handful of un- other interactions to really like feel out a person. You know what I mean? So you think just a few dates? Possibly, I would say a handful. I would say probably give or take four or five. You know what I mean? Like oh, you have, see, and I think it's way longer than that. I, I, I'm, I no, 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 I'm no, no, like no, two no, or three no, no, years no, 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 I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not talking about like a relation. I'm talking about like if you feel like you can make a judgment call if if I want to be in a relationship with this person. Okay. That, that's what I mean. It's like okay. if you can go on a first date, everyone can have a good or bad first impression. Right. After like two or three, you're like, okay, I'm, I'm you. At that point, I feel like you can kind of get to know somebody pretty well. Right. And then at that point, after you've had four or five, I feel like you can make a realistic. 
a, a realistic assumption of like I have I have met with you. We've had we've had probably dinner together. We've probably seen a movie together. We've had long conversations together, possibly. I'm, you know, I'm hypo, um, hypothesizing here. But at that point, I feel like after you have a handful, if not a little bit more, you probably could be like. At that point, I feel like you can you can determine: Am I going to be friends with you, or are we not going to mesh at all? And at that point, I feel like you can be like, I actually really like you. Like mm-hmm. I feel like you and me here, like on this podcast, you, right. you. I think after the first three or four episodes, I was still trying to get to know you, but now I feel like we're you've known me for right, a right, right, yeah, it's like we've known for a handful of years. Poo poo coffee together, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right, yeah, right. Okay, so, so let's yeah. let's go with another one. I got I got one that's kind of dear to me because uh, I'm almost sixty. Um, I've had a few dates in my life. Um, luckily though, I won't have any more except with my wife. You're right, you're right, right. So, <laughs> that's um, a good thing. Yeah, that's a yeah. great thing. Right. But, um, I've run into this one a little bit. Substance abuse. Ooh, that's all. That's okay. Heavy, how much of a red flag is that? Because if you're a heavy drinker, how much more of a heavy drinker is it going to take for you to have a red flag on that person? Yeah. Yeah. So when does, when does substance abuse come in and become a red flag? If, I, well, I mean, I would think if it's affecting your ability to carry on in a meaningful relationship with someone, right? Is that then the I think that I think that's where the line would be crossed. Mm-hmm. Now, the question is, that could be that line could move based upon who the other person is. Right. Now, if that, the that's other, what I'm saying. If the other person also kind of shares a little bit of those mm-hmm. things, then. And so, and this is where, and that feels like something you wouldn't, you wouldn't learn in the first, like that feels like something you learn like as over time, time. Over as time. time. That's why I'm saying. And that's hard because that, that feels more like a, that's heavy because it's like, you're already probably in a relationship with this person. You got to make a heavy decision at that point. I feel like if it's that bad, but that's a definite red flag for me. Cause for me, like for me personally, my, in my own life. I have been with girls that have smoked cigarettes before, Ugh. and they had like a, they had a pretty bad. See, I don't like, and, and that's what I'm saying. I like, do not like and, smoking cigarettes. Okay, and, so cigarettes is our main that's, yeah, flag. Right. That's a biggie yeah. for me. Yeah, yeah, and so that's what I'm saying is like for me, the the girls that I've been with, they wanted to get better, and a lot of times they did get better. Not only mm-hmm. for themselves, but also for me, because I was like, to be honest, I don't want to kiss you. At, like, yeah, any, I'm tasting an ashtray. Exactly, and it, anywhere around cigarettes, because I don't smoke cigarettes personally. I don't smoke anything. It's just a personal thing. But there was times where situations happened, and like they had a cigarette or two, and it's like, I mean, you know, I get that's an addiction. I'm not going to be hard on you, and I understand that, but I still won't really waver on that. Like, I'm not. I don't. You know, as long as you tell somebody kind of up front right. that, you know, look, these are some things that yeah. I just, mm-hmm. yeah, you're right. I can't, I can't I, go there. Yeah. I want to interject on this one a little bit. Um, I remember when, and we all know, thanks listeners for your prayers and thoughts. I had brain surgery a couple months yes, ago, Yes, but I remember um, meeting the surgeon and Miranda mm. and I are sitting there. <laughs> And the surgeon <laughs> says, well, m- you know, Mr. Stoney, do you smoke? And I said, absolutely. And he looked at me and kind of tilted his head and he goes, what do you smoke? Cigarettes or marijuana? And I said, no, normally brisket, um, <laughs> pulled pork or baby back ribs. <laughs> and so he, he kind probably of looked, looked at oh, you like, man. really? Yeah. Well, you know, what's We're funny about that, he, he did look at me funny, but now he's one of my students. When right. I teach barbecuing right. and smoking, he's one of my students. So wow. he took that to heart right there. That's, Sorry. that's great. All right. At least even in the face of adversity, you have a great sense of humor. I try. Yes. I try. But he's turned out to be a friend. That's good. I love that. So, but it, I, For me, though, substance abuse, I, I don't like someone that willingly loses control. Now, I'm not saying every once in a while I don't have a glass. We we, we right, of partake course. here. Yeah, we may I, have I, something. I, mean, to, I, I drink occasionally. Um, I mean. I have a love with an Italian meal or a nice oh, steak. Yeah. I love a glass of red wine. Mm-hmm. I'm not really a white wine person, but I love my scotch. I love my whiskeys. Mm-hmm. I don't overindulge, and I always try to be appropriate with that. Um, but someone that can just willingly go to the other end that would be such a huge red flag for me because if you're willing to to give that lose that kind of control, how much is that going to hurt us in the relationship? And 
even with a DWI, our financial stability or a hospital visit or something down the road, if you're not willing to take control of your life, how bad is it going to be in the future? Because I always tend to look toward the future. Right. Well, I mean, it's, as I said, I mean, you start a, any type of relationship, you put your best foot forward. Oh, yeah, of course. And then over time, I've always said that it takes two years mm-hmm. to mm. really know someone. And there's some science behind that because I know at where I work, um, I believe like probation for peer for for peer for people mm-hmm. is it's, 24 months. It's 24 months. Oh, really? And, yeah. So, I mean, because anybody can fake anything for a year. Right. It's really into that second yep. year that those tendencies that you're trying to hide start the, to yeah, come out. The mm-hmm. core personality yeah, traits. Yeah, who yeah. you are. Now, there are ways to jumpstart that. I do believe that. And one of the easy things that you can do, if you really want to know what somebody's red flags are and you want to know pretty quickly – Take a road trip. Mm, Mm -hmm. Interesting. Get in a car for a week with somebody. Yeah. And drive eight to 10 hours a day and go somewhere and come back. And you'll see somebody's true colors right there. Interesting. Well, I mean, you basically, yeah, you you get up and close with somebody Mm -hmm. and you're, it's just you and that person. I heard the same thing about, um, like, like considering moving in with a friend of yours, even if it's a close friend, you have to be very careful moving in with them because it's it's there it's that people don't realize it but it's that next step up from like a friendship that you may not be ready sure. for with some people mm-hmm. um in in that that like that's an extra level of intimacy that sometimes people don't really consider until like it's already happened and you're in an apartment with them mm-hmm. and you're like oh wow i like this is a this is my home now right now and this person's there <laughs> And if they're a bad person or a toxic person, in a lot of ways, it could be, it can expedite that process of like, we used to be good friends or um, maybe just really like uh, really close acquaintances in some way. But now we're like at this next level and I'm starting to realize really quickly that like, I used to like you as a friend whenever like you could go home. But now mm-hmm. that you're here all the time, it's like, oof, I didn't. Well, in that, you know. <laughs> the road trip or moving in together, right, right, right. when you're that familiar with somebody, there's an old saying, you know, we hurt the people closest to us. Right. right. So you become familiar with them. So that, that allows conflict to come into the situation. What about a red flag of somebody who can't resolve simple conflict issues? What if somebody always oh, yeah. attacks? Is, is the lack of um, resolving a conflict a red flag? If you get into something with somebody and they always want to be belligerent or throw up your past or be ugly to you or a conflict doesn't always have to be attacking. It can just be a conflict. You don't agree on this one subject. And instead of just talking about it and hammering it out, do we escalate it and escalate it and escalate it? That would be a lack of conflict you know, oh, yeah. management, I guess, resolving of conflict, to me, that would be a red that flag. Even, that even goes, that even just boils down even more to just like red flags and friendship. Like mm-hmm. if, if you can't. Yeah, well, I mean, this, this we're talking <laughs> if, about. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. I mean, it's it's not just, if, if at that point. Friendship is a relationship. Yeah, right, you right. have a relationship that's, with your enemies. That's so. what I'm saying. Is like, yeah. I'm, I'm, I thought you were like, I thought you were saying that in the context of like, you can't be with somebody if that's the case. And I was like, I don't think I could be friends with somebody. I feel like I would, mm-hmm. I would drop a friend or I would drop a person. I agree. That was like acting like that, that, that had those tendencies where mm-hmm. like, I, I can't have a, I can't, I, I can't have a civilized conversation with you. I probably don't want to be friends with you anyways. <laughs> you know what I mean? If we can't sit here and have like a cordial conversation where we're not shouting and like getting angry and all that kind of stuff. Like, I don't know. Well, I'm, I'm, we're like, we're like lucky the, because the three of us are communicators <laughs> and we like communicating and we can actually talk to somebody right. who doesn't agree with us. And we're not going to take the offensive and attack somebody just because they don't. We're right. going to hold a conversation and hope that we both can learn from that conversation. Not everybody's like that. What about the person that always has to be right? Mm, no, thank you. Don't I, talk about me on this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we're going to talk. Why, why, why you want to blast me on the podcast? <laughs> you call Stony, I'm calling yeah, you out. <laughs> well, that's the boomer generation. I'm just saying, we, you know. You're going to call me out to say my name. <laughs> oh, man. Isn't that wow. kind of aggravating yes. to be with somebody yeah. that always has no, to be right? They're you. never wrong about anything. Right. The, okay. The, 
I have learned something in my that's a good red flag in my right in there. my in my early to mid twenties, and I learned this from I learned this hilarious enough through my parents and their divorce is what really sparked this whole thing. And I realized, and it, I'm still learning this every day. So trust me when I say I'm. I feel like I'm. Ta- I'm saying this to myself, if nothing else. More people in their lives need to be okay with admitting that they're possibly wrong sometimes. I feel like more people need to look at themselves in the mirror and go, in this situation, there's a possibility I could be wrong. And sometimes you need to tell yourself outright, I'm wrong. Sometimes, I mean, it depends on the scenario. You could be very right in this scenario. You could be very justified in that. But sometimes, especially when it's like somebody else and it has to do with their feelings and, and their life and their experience and what they've gone through, Sometimes it's okay to just look at yourself or look at that scenario and go, I'm okay being wrong here, or I'm okay not having the final say and not being the one that's always right. And that was hard for me to realize that is like, because again, that was something like my parents had really went through. Mm-hmm. It was like both of them were right. Right. And I was, there, I was the third party looking at it going, actually, neither one of you are right. Well, you know, there's and, an neither, old and neither one of you are, are oh. humble enough to right. admit that you're wrong. Right. And that was the hard part. It's like mm-hmm. you're hurting, not only you're hurting your, your each other, you're hurting me. The kids. Because yeah. neither one of you want to admit that you're and wrong. And you won't back down. And I was like, and that was hard. And and each person had dug in. And, 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 that's, and that's what I'm saying. So sometimes I may not do it all Light the time. Their flag. I, I may not be, I may mm-hmm. not do this all the time. I may not be perfect at it. But I, I now look at, I, I'm, I now I'm able to dis, disconnect from a scenario and go, is there a possibility that I'm, I'm the one wrong here or that I'm not the one who's 100% right here? And it has helped me out well, like in a situation that I think it's a good character trait that, again, to kind of correlate mm-hmm. with what you guys were talking about, is if someone, can't ha- if someone doesn't have that ability to step back and go, or, or even as, as um, more information comes about, I may say, like, I'm 100% right. I believe this way. And then you ever have those arguments with people that the more information that kind of comes about, the more tr- like the more truth that gets shed on the situation, the more they just double down they dig on, in. on yeah. how Magnus wrong they are. <laughs> Magnus is the is the king and like, of this and subject like, right now. And, and you're like, if only you could really see how how mm-hmm. far you're going, just mm-hmm. just to be right. If mm-hmm. you could just like step back and go, you know what? Maybe I am wrong, and that's okay. All of a sudden, it's like, oh well, there's nothing to fight about anymore. It, well, <laughs> I mean, a lot of times, we, I mean, relationships, it, it's it's going to come. How bad do you want to fight for the yes. relationship? Well, yes. I mean, there's an old adage, and I'd like to say this now, and and, and I've kind of learned this over the years, right. and, and I hope when you find somebody, Jason, I hope you understand this, and Ian, I hope you understand this going into your marriage. Right? Um, do you want to be right? Or married. <laughs> yeah, I've heard that many a times. And I'm going right, to tell you right. what, for, that would probably be hard for me. For a for a couple to, to succeed in marriage, two people have to be happy. Right. And that's the wife and her mother. <laughs> <laughs> oh uh, how did this change? How did this dynamic change in these relationships like this? Because it's hard for me to imagine that people who lived... 150 years, 200, 500 years ago, a yeah. 1,000 years ago, were they arguing about this kind of stuff? Were these dynamics in place when it came to relationships? You know what I, you know what I think I it is? I don't think it was. No. You know what I think it is? I think that um, that wasn't important. It's, no, it, it probably was. It was, it was because, survival. I, I, yes, I was, it was survival. I, I think that there was, at that point, at the, when, you, when you start reaching back like 100, 100 or more years ago, I feel like the priority was so much simpler than that. I think the family unit oh, as yeah. a whole was what was important. <clears throat> right. And right, everybody right. fell into the roles that they needed to do right. and just did them because that was what was important. Right. But this pseudo intelligence that we supposedly have now, we've changed the dynamic of the family. And now that that dynamic is changing, conflict comes in. Well, it, it's now personal. It's personal fulfillment. Mm-hmm. Right. So we're no it's long, not family fulfillment, right, it's personal fulfillment. We're, we're, I mean, the, the fact is, everybody can pretty much function on their own now. Mm-hmm. Right? I can entertain myself. I can do all the... I don't need somebody there with me 24-7 doing that. Whereas back in the past, mm-hmm. one, there was probably very little entertainment because you didn't have time oh, for yeah. it. And it mm-hmm. was... I mean, you were pretty much... Busy with the, the, the business of survival right. from sun up to sundown. Well, it was a community effort, even in 
we're from South Louisiana, the Cajun culture was built and based on that community effort. There was community centers. Families did what they did, and they did it, and then they came on Friday and Saturdays to the community center and traded and bartered. The men did what they did. The women did what they did. The kids did what they needed to do as a family unit. And now that family unit has died. It's not the same as well, it was what, back what, then. I mean, so why do you think it died? I what think, what I, caused I, it to I, die? I think the pseudo intelligence of the human race, number one. And number two, it, everybody has to work. There's no more family unit. There is their triple income it, families now because one of the parents has to have two jobs. One of them has to have one. And I just don't think the family unit is the same. I, I, Go ahead. I was going to say, I think it's more, um, I think people more often started asking, what can you do for me? Yes. Well, like, is, is like a, it's more of like a yeah, personal right, fulfillment. Yeah, yeah, it's, I was saying, yeah, it's like, is, is the, the question is like, what, what can I get out of this instead of like, like how could you improve my life in some way or how, or how can we do life together in mm-hmm. that kind of. How many divorces now are because of? Oh, I think it's over. 50. I'm not happy. Yeah. I mean, I mean, the the, the right now the, the statistics on divorce are just it's through Crazy. the roof. Yes, the leading cause of divorce in America is marriage. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh my God. Okay, I got one more yeah. I want to throw at y'all because yeah. it's yep. it's kind of I've had to deal with this one too a little bit. Yeah. Okay. I think in any relationship, and that's even sometimes friendships. Yeah. Um, a little jealousy is healthy, but in a relationship, constant jealousy to me is a red flag. Oh, that, I now? would agree with you a hundred percent on that. That would be a problem mm-hmm. in like regards with, to your career or like, what do you mean? In like, life. What, what if okay. I, I had this experience one time I was at a restaurant and the waitress came between me and the person that I was sitting next oh, to I see what you and mean. that person lost their freaking right, mind. Right, right, right. And caused the scene. Red flag, I can't see you anymore. Thank you. Bye-bye. Oh, right. so yeah, that, I couldn't deal but with that. Things like that. Just couldn't deal with a person like a that. A little jealousy is kind of cute when it's playful. Right. Okay? It, it's well, kind of cute. Yeah. Well, because I, well, I, I think it's it just, it, for me, instead of it being, I don't think, I don't know if there's a word for it, but it feels like, it just shows interest. It's like, sure. oh, like, it's, for me, it's like, if you, you, you I mean, do you, in your case, I mean, do you want to be, I mean, does that give you a little bit of satisfaction if you and your significant other, you're at a, an event and people looking at right. and going, and you know what they're looking okay. at. All right. First I mean, off, I got with a hot woman. I know I got a hot woman. <laughs> so I know people are going to be looking at her. I'm not offended by that. Mm. I know I Brings got a, a smile hot woman. To your that's face. right. I'm going. That's right. <laughs> She's so, coming home so, with me. <laughs> you know, most people got to wonder. You know, mm-hmm. I'm sitting here with Miranda, hottie, hottie, hottie doctor. Yes. And they got to wonder whether I got money or I'm got a big package. Right, right. And or a great so personality. I got Come them on. Both fooled. I, I I got them fooled. No I got cliche. Neither. He's got a great personality. <laughs> He's got a great personality. <laughs> no, but it's and like I, that's what I mean. Is like I think that and I I don't know if it's. I don't know if it's jealousy or just attraction, but it's like there's a, I feel like there's a difference of <clears throat> where it's unhealthy. Sure. Well, like I'm saying, like if there, if I, because the, the opposite being if someone was a never cared, mm-hmm. like if you're, if you're in a relationship with, with a, with a woman and like at, at no point does she ever like show, um, show pride that you, that you were with her in some way. And it's like if someone else, if there are those scenarios you're talking about where someone would feel um, happy and joyful or like even just kind of like a little bit prideful in a way that like, oh, you're with me, um, it feels almost like you don't care if like, mm-hmm. you know, it's like, it's like the opposite of That's what I'm saying. A little, so, a, a little bit. It's all within context and within reason. Extremes. There's always extremes. Yep. Okay. Yeah, got one more for y'all. How about well, this one? What about a um, battle with your family? Let's say you start mm. dating somebody or start hanging out and mama this, daddy that, always this, always that. Mama don't like you. Mama this. What What about, you know, being I, uh, uh, overdone with the family? Or you mean like she is not happy with my family or I, or she's not happy with her family? 
like well, in this like scenario. her family is intruding on your relationship. Oh, I see. I, I was in a relationship one time with a girl that that exact dynamic was at play, and my so her family didn't my like mother. You. No, oh, no, oh, no, no. Her family had it was my my mother did not. <laughs> Uh-oh. Did not jive with her. It Uh-oh. was just something that just yeah yeah. It was like oil and water. It yeah. just never worked, and it, there was conflict. I and mean, it just there was and, right. Um. So yeah, I experienced that, and um, you know, it was it's probably the only time I've ever really dated someone that that happened. Mm. Okay. So, so I, I don't. You don't have to elaborate. Was your mom right in that scenario, or was that something different? Like, uh, I, I think it was more of a matter of of. I mean, I have to say that the girl I was dating was probably a little closed off. Got it. Um. Got it. And you know, my, my mom wasn't used to that. I and, see. and it just, I, I could tell, it ain't working. Yeah. You know, that it, it was just she didn't really show a lot of warmth to I my see. mother. I see. Um, or at least she perceived that. Uh, yeah, and, that's what your mom uh, got in the scenario. I and that. and you know, in my case, you know, it's it's you know me being single for as long as I have. I mean, it's I've been dealing with this kind of yeah different things for years. Um, but it's hard to meet somebody, of course. Oh, absolutely, and jive with that person, yeah. and and overcome, and especially the older you get. And I would venture to say we're talking about red flags. The red flags change with age. Absolutely. Oh, yes. They yeah, change absolutely. with age. So when I, I was 25 years old and, 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 and dating, and there were things I didn't care about, and I'm sure girls right, I was right. dating didn't care about, but at, you know, at my age now, the rug. post 50, it's, it's a whole different ball game. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, right. so, and then the older you get, the more baggage you accumulate. Of course. And you right. carry those scars into yeah. those relationships. And, and sometimes where you say saying some girls – you know, or guys, vice versa. Right. You kind of tap out yeah. quickly it's because they've been, okay, I've seen this, I'm out. Yeah. You mm-hmm. know, and, I'm, the, you know, and I don't want to deal with it. I have a very, I have a very similar uh, uh, sensation what you're talking about, of like realizing repeat offenders yeah. in a way, is I, um, me being a musician for the handful of years that I, I, I was, and then, of course, being in the production side of it where I was like, I would tour with bands or all that kind of stuff. I would be around people, um, of certain level of fame, I guess you would call it in in a way. Um, and so as you can imagine, there is a, um, there was a certain, a certain type of girl that would be interested in me, but I feel like they would be interested in me to get to something either be money or some level of fame or to get to the other person that they're trying to get to. It's like that. So the same thing, there's like this kind of a repeat offender kind of thing where you're like, I, I see the writing on the wall here. Do you actually care about me or you just care about the, the situation around me? Mm-hmm. And it could be the, it could be that yeah, they're attracted yeah. to the situation. I right, think a right. lot of people that are, famous probably deal with that and yeah that's why it's probably so if, hard for them to have any sort right, of meaningful right. relationship mm-hmm. if, if if i was taken out of this scenario and we were just like in a room somewhere would you still care like would you be still be as infatuated as you are right now that kind of mm-hmm. question would be asked right. a lot oh and not to them but like in my own head I'd, I'd ask that question i was like i think that's a fair question right mm-hmm. you know i really do yeah. but and, and also like the family and the friends issue Man, how hard is it to come into a situation where you're kind of set in? What if you'd have met Mallory and all your friends and your brothers and, mm-hmm. and things like that? Can Can you imagine how hard it is to come into that situation? I mean, well, and, and you're you're thinking about and think about this. You're the single guy going to meet this girl, and you know she's got girlfriends, and you oh, know yeah. they're going to talk, and they of know they're going to be they looking at you and mm-hmm. and judging you. And women you know, talk; they they talk a lot. <laughs> I and, think you know, in a men's talk. bathroom, when you go into a restaurant or a club, there's a couple of urinals in a bathroom and, and some toilets. But if you ever actually get to glance and look into the female bathroom, they got TVs, couches, oh, and all this kind of social, stuff. It's a full. It's it's a network. They, they're, all the all the clubs and and things are networked together. They all they go got, to the bathroom they, together. They go to the bathroom together, <laughs> and the guys' pictures pop up there. Hey, do you know oh, this guy? No. Stay away from him. Yikes. So it's a whole different scenario. But it's so hard coming into that what if what if your brothers and your friends would have just kind of looked at mallory and went huh, i don't know i don't think so right, right. That and they happened. put that pressure on yeah, you that's that's, that's hard 
The oh, and and so and that's I, I, if my mom is listening, I apologize. I'm gonna go ahead and call you out. Sometimes she's hard to please, especially in a relationship scenario like that. Mm-hmm. All right. And so a lot of times I and I've done this before in the past, and I did this with Mallory as well. I was like, I usually will. The my friend group of like of friends yeah. is usually always super accepting. So I'm like, mm-hmm. usually I can I can introduce somebody into that group of friends of mine and usually they're always like oh cool how's it going mm-hmm. and then well and then everyone kind of jives pretty well together and and mine is like that too yeah but they're watching you better really, make him yeah, happy right right you better treat him <laughs> yeah. right because we're gonna love you right, while that's right, right. going on but you know we want our dog to have a good woman <laughs> and you know he, he just you know right but take like, care of him but my for my my mom though my mom is always particular she she loves me very much and no one's good enough in in her mm-hmm. eyes. It's but moms out. also have a certain you're expectation right, right. for and someone I, and dating that's why, their, their and, babies, and that's why I don't ever complain about it. Because if, if there's one thing in life that I realized, I don't mind the fact that my mom loves me too much. Because I don't mm-hmm. want the opposite of that, to be honest. And so <laughs> when she's that, really the only yeah, one that really it, has it, your back. I know the, 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 my best interest at heart here. So there was definitely a point in time where, like, I I want to make sure that I'm solid in my relationship, at least for a a, a, a pretty good amount of time before I introduce her to my mom. Cause once you introduce my mom, especially if my mom likes you, you gotta be ready for it. Cause if she loves you, she's going to really love you and you gotta mm-hmm. be prepared for that. And so I told, I had a whole conversation with Mallory before and I was like, we're going to go to dinner with my mom. It's gonna be a really nice restaurant. It's going to be great. She's probably going to be very, you know, analytical and ask a lot of questions. That's okay. She means well by it. Um, but just know like if you guys like really hit it off and you like each other, like just know that like, my mom sometimes can really, really love you. Mm-hmm. Like, and if you're not, and I know Mallory smothering can, love, yeah, smothering love. And, my, and, right. and Mallory kind of came from a family that wasn't really very affectionate. So I had to tell her like, Hey, Oh wow. My mom's going to probably hug you and like love on you. It's like totally normal. <laughs> the first handful of times that Mallory met my mom, she was like, I don't know if I can handle this, but now they're the best of friends ever. Oh, that's each, good. They love each other so much. That's great. So, that's I'm, important. I know. And I trust me. I, yeah, I appreciate it. Huge people who, people who kind of defy that, I just think they're asking for problems later yeah. on in life. I yeah. just do. I think Mallory calls my mom and like talks to her about life stuff and just confides in her in a way. And I'm like, and I love that. It makes me happy to, that they care about each other in that way. So it makes, makes me happy. your life easier. <laughs> you telling me? Well, I mean, in <laughs> essence, I mean, she's basically. Yeah. I mean, your mom is in essence handing yeah. you over to exactly. her. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's what's. right. I mean, in in the old times, that was important yeah, oh, yeah. for mama's yeah. approval with. Yep. Well, a lot of times it was arranged. <laughs> well, I mean, I mean, part of that arrangement was mm-hmm. suitability. I yeah. mean, yeah, I think, okay, I'm yeah. going to do this. Or financial. <laughs> it was oh, all yeah. financial, really. I if mean, you really want to go back to oh, why yeah. marriages happen, it was all financial. Right. Well, anyways, is there anything else you guys want to add to this? Any, uh, any more red flags? <laughs> any more? Uh, I mean, I, I, mean we, I think of all the big ones. I mean, money. You know, I, I just think it's interesting. The, personality the, flaws. The more we talked about this, the more I equated it into friendship. I feel like friendship for me is more, especially at this point in time in my life, because of where I am in my relationship with Mallory. It's interesting to look at this now because I just recently, like we, we added a, a, like two new people into the friend group at different times. But like, and it was kind of the same sort of thing. We like, we hung out a handful of times until like everyone kind of knows this person. And now like they're regular people regular people in the friend group because again like everyone kind of knows this person yeah. everyone kind of feels each other out and it's like are we going to mesh together and sometimes it works out sometimes it doesn't but that's that is something that's like relevant to me as of the past four or five months now is like i've met a, a new friend of mine dominic and i'm like we lived in the same town together we have so much in common we're like we're basically the we've we've lived very similar lives like kind of born and raised in the same town and mm-hmm. have very similar beliefs and stuff like that and it's just interesting to see that like He's a, a few years younger than I am, but it's like, man, I, I, I maybe have known him for three or four months now, and like he's talking to me about you know some pretty big life stuff for him, mm-hmm. and I'm like, wow, dude, like I, I'm having like really deep conversations with this person, and I'm like, you know, like uh, I'm getting, I'm getting, I'm really doing life with this person, um, in a whole new way that like I. I Whereas another person that may have joined the friend group that I may not have jived with in a certain way or may have a red flag or whatever, I was like, oh. 
well, don't really I think, talk to I th- anymore. I think guys are going to meet a lot of guys in their life and have a lot of friends. Right. But we're just so lucky to get that one woman. We're going to overlook <laughs> a lot of the red flags. And then as you age, that changes. I know when I was younger, I was looking for different things. I told um, Miranda when we started dating, I had to quit messing with the young girls. And I needed to find somebody that could recognize the signs of a stroke. Right. And then guess what? Yeah. I had a stroke. So, you know, jokingly, Mm -hmm. but what I started looking for was different. Right. And red flags to me became more important than when I was younger. I started Mm -hmm. looking at things. Um, What is this person going to be like and what are they going to bring to the table? I'm lucky with Miranda that she brings a lot to the table. She's super smart. She's beautiful. And she cares about me in ways I've never experienced before. Not in creepy, weird ways. Right. But just well, ways I loves, haven't experienced. She loves you. She loves me. Yeah. And I believe love is an action word. Mm-hmm. And you do it every single day. That's and right. people that are in marriages make that decision every single day of their life. Am I going to love this person? Well, mm-hmm. if you talk to and it's an different old couple, than being in lust with yeah, somebody, that's, right. that's a whole different Absolutely. ball game. If you talk to an old couple, how did you last 40 years? How did you last 50 years? Well, their answer was, we didn't throw it away. If it was broke, we fixed it right. together. And that's what Miranda and I believe in is that we fix it together. We look at each other and we go, we're smart enough together. We can figure this out. So my red flags were, different than they were 20 years ago or 40 years ago. And when you're looking at these boxes, she just checked all the boxes that I needed checked. And I hope I did the same for her because obviously we got married. So I must have. And, and the red flags just were different. I think I've realized now that we've had this conversation and uh, and we've been extrapolating on this is, uh, there was a handful of times where I like ended I ended things after a few dates just because I realized that we weren't going to mesh. Mm-hmm. Um, not because it was any one red flag or there may have been like a handful of things, but I think it was just like I, after a handful of like conversations with a person, I was able to realize like, I just don't think that I think you like the idea of me, but I don't think you're actually going to like, I, I know myself well enough to know. I don't think you're going to. Yeah. I, I just, and I, that may have been just because of where I was at in my life as far as mm-hmm. like, you know, mid twenties or whatever, but like, and I think you'll find that hopefully mm-hmm. you don't have to worry about it. I hope you and Mary, right, yes. but you'll find when you grow older, those type of things just change. Of course. What you're looking for changes. Mm-hmm. Well, you should look for someone that compliments you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. To me, that's the key. Um, because as you get older, I mean, you're going to be looking for different things. I mean, right now you're, you've, you've got an idea in your brain 20 years from now, you're going to think differently. <laughs> oh yeah, definitely. You just saw, she's going to think differently mm-hmm. in 20 years. Yes. Yep. Um, so I think it's somebody that not that you're not going to have problems or you're going to have arguments. Cause I think that's inevitable Yeah. because we're human beings and we all have an opinion on things and how things should be. And you know, it's it's work. It's once again, does do you want to love me? Yeah. Right? If you want to love me, then you can overcome anything. Mm-hmm. I really believe that. Right. If you don't want to love me, then ultimately it's going to be doomed for failure. Right. You may like someone. Yeah. You may mm-hmm. like someone a lot. Loving yeah. is a whole different level uh, because you don't expect anything back. Right. You mm-hmm. do it freely. Yeah. And that works in friendships too. Oh yeah, hundred percent. Absolutely, so. it does take right. takes energy to even be friends. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> well, man, what a good what a good show. Yeah, I like that conversation. That was good. Okay. That was a yeah. good one. I yeah. enjoyed it. Well, I was mm-hmm. kind of worried about it at first, but <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it worked out when, pretty good. When, yeah. when talking to people about the podcast, um, I found a lot of people have said, "Well, I don't know if I like that topic or this topic or." I don't like all of y'all's topics. Well, we can't hit it on every time. Right. But I had um, one person tell me that we did a show on gaming. And she said, that doesn't interest me at all. Right. I didn't even want to listen to it. But because I like your podcast, I want to support y'all. I actually listened to the episode on gaming. 
And then she said, I learned a number of things about it on how to deal with my husband who games Mm. and my two boys who games. And then I talked to another young lady from work who has no interest in gaming. And she says, but I listen to it anyway, because I support your podcast. And she said, I actually wound up liking the episode. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) And so I think that's kind of the, one of the neat things about our podcast is when we talk about these things from our different perspectives. And today was, was uh, you know, we had a couple different perspectives. Yeah. The, the boomer, mm-hmm. the ex, the millennial, the married, the engaged, and the single. Mm-hmm. And and it just wound up being a fun conversation on things that maybe can help people. You don't have to make decisions based off of what we said. Right. But maybe it'll help you click or check some boxes or scratch some things off or what to look for when you're meeting somebody. That's right. And realize just because you meet somebody doesn't mean you have to spend the rest of your life with them and wind up making bigger and better and worse mistakes down the road. Check these boxes off. Yep. Find out about yourself or, and be confident enough or in sometime, yourself. Or sometimes it's it's just nice to, like I said, step back from a scenario and just really ask yourself, is this worth, this is worth fighting about? Am I, am I even right? Am, am I, am I okay potentially ruining this relationship just because I want to be right right now? I think it was it's Bob okay. Marley who said everybody's going to cause you pain. You just have to find the one that's worth the pain. Mm, that's right. That's good. And I found mine. There you go. Do I make a decision to love you today? Right. That's right. I love that. That's a great. Yeah. Well. I wonder if that should be the title of the podcast. I was just going to do red flags. I okay. Like, red hey. flags is fine. <laughs> fine. Do red flags. I'll put, I'll put that in the, in the description. Okay. I'll, I'll incorporate that. Mm-hmm. But if you're looking for a way to uh, give us topics or request something for us to talk about, you can reach out at facebook.com forward slash retrospect pod. You can actually type in retrospect pod on almost anything and basically find us, but we have a link tree forward slash retrospect pod and it has all the links that you can go to and all the different places where you can uh, listen to us or, or talk to us in all the different ways. But anyways, until next week, thank you so much for listening. Bye-bye. Good night, everyone. God bless. Peace. Peace.